first uh, Atmel Studio tutorial. Here I have Atmel Studio 7 open. In this tutorial I will be explaining the basic functionalities and how to use Atmel Studio 7. So we will start by creating a new project which can be done over here under in the start page or under file new file new project this page will be shown the first time you start up your uh, Atmel Studio you can disable this down here with show page on startup you can also disable all these announcements by disabling show feeds if you have disabled a uh, show page on startup, you can go up here and click on start page to bring this page up. There are other functionalities up here that I will be explaining later. So let's go ahead and create a new project. We can do that by clicking the new project here. Here you can choose between many different types of projects including C and C++ and assembler uh, codes, code types, programming uh, code types. You can download different types of programming languages into your Atmel Studio. We will not cover how to do that in this tutorial. If you have an ASF board, then you should select GCCC ASF board project. If you are wiring uh, your Atmel uh, chip up manually, you should uh, select either GCCC executable project or GCCC++ executable project. Static library projects are in case you're writing a library, which then you can import and use over and over again. We will not cover how to create, uh, use a static library, or we will not create C++ uh, uh, projects in this lesson, but you create them the same way as you do it with GCCC. So let's go ahead and create a GCC executable project. You can enter the name. I will name it Atmel Studio Tutorial 1 and select the location where you would like to save it. I will save it onto my desktop. You can also create a Arduino sketch, which is a simplified version of C++. Uh, Arduino requires a separate board or a custom wiring. So if you would like to get more information about that, go into arduino.cc. So here we will select the processor we will be using. There are a lot of processor Atmel makes, including ARM, uh, and AVR, AVR is 8-bit or is 32-bit processors. Usually for your embedded projects, you will be using AVR. So here you can select out the AVR you would like. AVR is ATtiny and Atmega, the two common ones. ATtiny is small memory chips and Atmega is larger memory chips. In this tutorial, as an example, I will be using one of the most common chips, which is ATmega328. You can either scroll down and find uh, ATmega328 here. There are three models of it, which vary by a minimal amount. As you have probably realized, here on the right-hand side, it says a lot of information about it. It says the supported tools that you can use. The most common uh, programmer that you also probably should purchase if you don't have one is the GTA GIC Mark II. This is if you want to program AVR, which are 8-bit. If you would like to program 
AVRs and ARMs, then I recommend the Atmel ICE, but of course this is much more expensive. Uh, Atmel ICE does not support debugging for uh, 8-bit chips. AVR ISP is the programmer I use. I am very satisfied with it. It's a very good programmer and it supports debugging for 8-bit. If I would have to buy a programmer again, I would buy this again because it is one of the best ones. Another way to find uh, devices and chips is typing the name in here. So let's try at mega328 and it will, you don't have to press enter, it will automatically search and you can select your device type. In this tutorial, I will be using AT Mega 328 as an example. So once the project has loaded, this is the default project. This is what you start out with. In this tutorial, I will be not be uh, writing any code. I will just be explaining where everything is in the Atmel Studio. So as you see up here, here are the menus. In file, you can create new projects and new files. New files are usually used for uh, libraries or if you want to write a multiple files and then combine them, it just helps organization. You can also create a new example project, which Atmel will recognize as an example project. You can open either a file or a project. If you open a new project, the current project will save. So be aware that will close. So be aware that you save your current project. You can uh, combine two projects together or no, this is not combined function. This is the, you can open an other project without closing the other one. So this is the, where you do that. This is a new uh, uh, feature of Atmel Studio 7. So here you can see, you can close Atmel Studio or close this uh, current project. You can also import different projects. This is where you combine the projects and you can save it in different ways, print it. And you, there's, this is a very useful thing that you can open recent files. If you are coding a lot and you have to do it quickly, just go and enter recent files and you can reopen. Under the edit menu, of course, we have undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, uh, and delete. I hope you are familiar with that. Copy is obviously copy, paste is paste. Uh, cut is when it removes the data but copies it. You can, there is the traditional uh, word editing things such as quick find, find and replace and all these. These are all, all similar things. You can also create bookmarks. Under the view menu, we have more important things. We can uh, alter the view between code uh, and many other explorers and windows such as the Atmel tools which we will be using to program it, output and start page. It, this is another place where you can find it. You can also make, put it, your Atmel 2D into full screen if, that's how you, if that is how you prefer it. Personally I think I enjoy looking at it much more because I can also navigate down here like this. I will not explain vAssist X in this tutorial because it's uh, more complicated and you will not require it the first time you use Atmel Studio. Same with the ASF Explorer. Project as you see it's ASF Wizard, Wizard so you I will not be covering this but here you can change the properties of the 
uh, current project which here you will be able to set the programmer which is under tool and here if you have it plugged in you can select it and then you will be able to upload it which I will show you at the end of this tutorial. If you do not have a, a programmer with you right now but you still want to test it you can click on simulator and it will uh, work the same exact way. You can even uh, debug it. Here you can select the device and there are different functions such as builds and different uh, build is when you uh, want to create your code into machine code which that's how the chip actually works it doesn't uh, absorb the code you wrote but Atmos Studio converts it into a different one and that is sent to it so this is where you can do that so you don't actually run it but only build it deadbug is a very useful function that I will cover in a different tutorial because it is it has a lot of functionalities but it's very very simple to use under the tools menu you can see command prompt which you can use if you are looking for something but don't know where it exactly is you can search for online uh, uh, docu documents on Atmel how you uh, use it there's also the device programmer which you, we will use to program our actual device you can add a target and there's also that data visualizers which are for debugging under window you can create new windows if you have dual monitors or you just want to split the window you can click split and these are the traditional uh, splitting functions there's also a help menu that I didn't I don't really like because it always opens the internet and that just I find it frustrating that it's not like on Mac OS X where it you can search within the software but on Atmel Studio 7 there's this quick launch where you with keywords you can search for things so this is a very useful uh, feature. Here we have the navigation uh, toolbar which is the shortcuts for cut, copy and the things that we have already covered up here. On the toolbar under that here this is the debugging. If you hover over it it should uh, come up with a small text box that describes what it is. This is probably the uh, most common uh, thing you will start debugging with because it's constantly dead debugs it doesn't stop the debugging after it ran through it once because that's what this does but we will cover that in a different tutorial here you have uh, you can step into these are all debugging things these are all debugging um, functions up here this is start without debugging this is what you will click when you just want to run the the code and upload it it will automatically upload sometimes it will uh, pop up an error if your uh, frequencies are not set up but we will cover that in a tutorial where we will actually be programming so here you also have a debugging uh, tool this is all debugging down here here you c if you click this it again brings you to this configuration uh, window which is the properties and it, I have a simulator selected if we go up here then we can see this this is also a debugger it will print a text when it gets to a breakpoint but as I would repeat for the like 10th time we will cover that in a different tutorial so here we have the solution explorer which 
in which you can uh, search for different solutions. Uh, here again we have the properties window which you can also activate down here. Then we have the home start page, then extensions and updates if you want to update your Atmel Studio or download different plugins for it. Here we have the device programmer which I will open in a second after I've gone through these and the command window. These are all shortcuts again for the stop uh, menu bars. So if we click device programming, this new window will pop up and you can select your tool here and your device and then you click apply. Here every information will be displayed uh, and you can read the, your device's information. This, if you actually have a, a plugged in circuit ready, then it will of course read it out there. If you have assembled your project once, then this will automatically fill out and you will just have to click program up here, this one, and it will automatically load everything on. You can also manually erase the chip if you want to clear it. Fuses and log bits, uh, you will have to change those sometimes because those are basically the configurations like settings on your PC. It sets up the so-called what CPU it uh, uses. It's just the frequency, but you will have to set those up. It's basically, if you don't set it up correctly, it's basically like uh, plugging a, trying to plug a carrot into the USB port. It won't work. So this is, and you can program the fuses down here. We will cover that when we are actually programming it. So these are the most of the functions that you will probably use, or some of these you may not ever have to use. Then obviously this is where you write your code. Then here you can see the different files open and the libraries you have included. You can switch between different uh, views and here you can also see the solution explorer where you see the files again so here the properties are just shown up in a short view down here this is the output window where once you run it if there are any errors it will show them on the error list it will automatically switch to this then there is the immediate window which I've never used and the output is again for debugging. Uh, just so you know why I talk so much about debugging, debugging is a very important thing because that's how you can easily figure out where you went wrong in a very very long code uh, or program and every programmer uses it. So yeah, yes, these are the simple functions of uh, Atmel Studio. If you have any questions, please post it in the comments and I will reply as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching.